The Backyard Ultra world record has fallen again, but not for the first time. The World Championship team event ends in controversial fashion. Let's talk about it. A few days ago, we saw the biennial Backyard Ultra National Team Championships take place, with 63 countries competing across the world, all starting their own Backyard Ultra event at exactly the same time in sync on the Saturday. Each team could have a maximum of 15 competitors taking part, and each runner would score one point for every yard or lap or loop that they completed. The idea being that the team who finishes with the largest number of points or yards or loops or laps uh, becomes the world team champion. And just in case you don't know what a Backyard Ultra is, it is an event where you run a course of 4.167 miles as many times as you possibly can. The winner is the last person standing and everyone else is a DNF. It was originally created by the legendary Lazarus Lake of Barclay Marathon fame and the original course is set in Laz's own backyard in Tennessee, hence the term yard to refer to a lap or a loop of the course. Now you'll notice I said the winner is the last person standing and that will become significant as the course of this video progresses so please do watch to the end of the video to make sure you find out why that's important. Do not change the damn champ. <laughs> but back to this team event. Every two years, the National Team Championships takes place, alternating each year with the individual World Championships. Teams are encouraged to work together to get as many points as possible for their team. However, within the team event, there's still a very big incentive for runners to win the individual event, because as long as the event itself goes over 25 hours, each individual winner is guaranteed a goal golden ticket to the following year's individual championships in Tennessee. Previous years have been dominated by the USA and Belgium, with Belgium winning in 2020 and the USA winning in 2022, and this year was set to be no different. Now, whilst the event was supposed to start with 63 teams from across the world, right off the bat, Israel and Greece's events, for whatever reason, failed to start altogether. So we were immediately down to 61. And then after only 20 hours, yes, 20 hours is at the beginning. <laughs> after only 20 hours, Ireland were forced to cancel their event because of high winds and dangerous conditions on the course. For most of us, running 100 miles is one of the ultimate ultra distance tests but for these guys 100 miles is achieved in 24 hours and for the big hitters that is pretty much just a warm-up after one day of running we had 53 teams left in the competition with Egypt Ecuador and Cyprus all having completed their races in under 24 hours from an individual perspective most of the big names were still there so Harvey Lewis the current world record holder was still banging out the yards for the USA as was Phil Gore former world record holder from Australia and then in Belgium we had Merlin Geetz and Ilbo Stiart who were the first people to break 100 yards for the Backyard Ultra still bashing them out for Belgium all through the weekend and into the next week the yards kept ticking over Belgium were in the lead but the USA were slowly climbing up the rankings and everyone kind of expected them to take control of the race but on 76 hours three days into the race world record holder Harvey Lewis dropped it was a big shock and it left the door open for Phil Gore and Ryan Crawford to make up some points and grab second place for Australia but by now Belgium were out of sight at the top of the leaderboard when Laz created the Backyard Ultra, he made it clear that there has to be a winner. There's no room for compromise. The format demands that somebody has to go further than anyone else is willing or able to endure, embodying the essence of what it means to fully test one's limits. If you've seen it, you know how it's done. You just don't quit. To that end, a tie is not allowed, and if there is a draw, the race ends without a winner, and the event is declared a failed event. 
The difficulty is that values like sportsmanship and team spirit and respect for your competitors are highly valued and whilst admirable, unfortunately they do sometimes inhibit individual competitiveness and ultimately impact performance. It's also true that setting goals is not a great idea in a backyard ultra. The idea being that if you do set a goal, once you reach it, you are far more likely to stop. Of course, it's very difficult not to set goals. Like in 2022, it was very clear that the Belgian team wanted to reach that mythical 100 yard target. Now that year, in that team event, Belgium actually came second to the USA, but two runners, Mayen Geetz and Ivo Stiart, ran further than anyone else in the world. They made it to 101 yards, that's four days, five hours of running, before they agreed to stop together, a tie. Fast forward to this year and Belgium are way out in front. They've effectively already won the team championships. There are three runners left. The world record is currently 108 yards set by Harvey Lewis at the individual world championships in 2023. He went as far as he possibly could before his assist, Eeyore Verries from Canada, was not able to continue. The irony being, of course, that you need an assist in order to get big numbers in a backyard ultra. And at the end of the day, the only person who doesn't know how far they could possibly have gone is the winner. So the three Belgian runners remaining had this 108 yard marker in their head and inevitably once they reached it, they added a couple of extra on for good measure and all three agreed to stop together at 110 yards and call it a draw. Now I hear you. Well done you say. What an amazing and fitting ending to the incredible journey that these three guys took together. Absolutely no need for a winner. After all, with an incredible world beating performance, there's no need for the golden ticket. They've got it anyway. So I understand, I get it. It's a lovely cozy ending, but that's not what the Backyard Ultra is. If you've seen it, you know how it's done. You just don't quit. In an interview not long after the race, the guys explained their reason for finishing together. It's a team event and they'd beaten all the other teams. Why would you then have to beat your own team members? Which I guess is a fair argument. Could one of them have gone one more yard or more? Well, of course they could, but we'll never know because they RTC'd. They refused to continue. That's an official term, by the way. Well, let's be nice. Yeah. Let's be nice. We don't have to go there. I mean, you're not wrong, but you didn't have to say it. I mean, but surely, Stephen, 110 yards and the world record is good enough. You're being overly harsh and unnecessarily critical. Well, perhaps. But look, they'd already showed team spirit and togetherness. They'd already showed the value of working together as a team. Now, now was the time in the spirit of competition and individual physical and spiritual transcendence to go just that one extra yard. All that said, massive congratulations to Mern, Evo and Frank for their incredible performance. I probably am being overcritical. It wasn't long ago that we thought 100 yards was near impossible. Now we're at 110. But let me know what you think. Were they right to stop where they did together? Or should they have continued? How many could they have done? Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the Film My Run channel and I'll see you on the start line next time.